Hello, this is Kenny Moore from TaggedPDF.com, continuing a series of short tutorials intended to help optimize PDF documents for assistive technology and mobile device users by meeting the new PDF accessibility requirements of the 508 refresh. In this video, we will explore one of the most vexing errors encountered when using PAC2, the excellent free PDF accessibility checker. The error is this one. Alternative description missing or an annotation. The category for this error is logical structure. The failure condition in the Matterhorn protocol reads, a link annotation does not include an alternate description in the contents key. So this is different from uh, alternative text that would be applied, for example, to an image. The alternative description for a link has to go in the contents key. This video will demonstrate a suggestion for resolving the error using Acrobat Pro. And that demo will use this example PDF that if you choose to, you can download and practice with. In PAC2, I have the example PDF loaded, so I will click Start and let the checker do its thing. And you can see that instead of the happy little green check mark, I get this angry red X showing this PDF contains errors, only partially accessible. Well, that's no good, so I will click the Report button. And I'm going to expand it a little bit. and drill down to the errors. And uh, we can see that we have two. If I click on each error, it will show us the location of the faulty link in the document. What makes this error so vexing is that there is no obvious way in Acrobat Pro to fix it. There's nowhere I can click in Acrobat Pro to get a dialog that guides me to easily create and populate a contents key. And it took me quite a while to uh, puzzle this one out. But if we go to the Tags pane, let's first examine a link that did not generate an error and see if we can uh, search out the contents key. So I will right-click on this link, select Properties. Then in the Object Properties dialog, I'll click the Edit Tag button. And then I'm going to bravely drill down into the tag element structure. I'm going to expand this uh, K array and then this enumerated dictionary, then this object dictionary. And inside the object dictionary, I find the secret hiding place of the contents key. So the next question is, what alternate description do I populate the contents key with? So a good practice uh, for a link that uh, goes to a web page is to use the title of the target page, either the title attribute or the title displayed on the page. So in this case, uh, we can see that the alternate description is section 508.gov, opening doors to IT. Now for an internal link, such as in a table of contents, the alternate description will often just mirror the link text. For example, it might be Chapter 1, Introduction. And one other thing to notice is the alternate description is enclosed in parentheses. This tells us that the value type is string, and that, it turns out, is important. Okay, so now we know where the contents key lives. Uh, we know what the value type should be, and we know what the alternate description should be. So let's tackle those errors. So in the Tags pane, I'm going to click on one of the links that uh, did give us an error. And I'll right-click, Properties, Edit Tag button. Then in the Tag Element dialog, drill down through 
the KRA, this enumerated dictionary, then into the object dictionary, and I can see that there is no contents key, and hence uh, the error. So I will select the object dictionary, click new item, and we know that the key is contents. We know that the value type, and it's important to remember this, change the value type to string. And the value should be the title of the target page. In this case, it is tagpdf.com. And would help if I spelled it correctly. Five oh eight PDF Help Center. So I'll click OK. And we can scroll down a bit and see that the contents key was created. It looks correct. It has the uh, parentheses, which we know uh, we set the value type correctly as string. So I will click OK. And move on to the next link that gave us an error. And same process, right click properties, edit tag, drill down through the K array, the enumerated dictionary, the object dictionary, and I find that this link tag already has a contents key. So why did it give us the error? Well, if we take a look in the main document window, we can see that this link is actually split across a line break. If we expand the link tag, we can see that it actually includes two link annotations. And if we go back to the tag element dialog, we can see that there are two of those enumerated dictionaries. Each one includes an object dictionary, and each object dictionary needs a contents key. Uh, the first one has one. If we open the second one, uh, we see that it doesn't have one. So I'm going to cheat just a little bit and copy the value from the, the, uh, the first one. And then if we go down to that second object dictionary, I'll select it, new item, and again we know the key is called contents. Help if I spelled that correctly. We know to change the value type to string, and I'm just going to paste the value. We'll click OK, and in the second object dictionary we can now see that the contents key has been created, looks correct. We'll click OK, close this down, and that should be good. Uh, we should have a PDF uh, UA compliant uh, document. Now, it's uh, always a good idea when using Acrobat Pro to save your work to a new file name. That gives you a way to backtrack in case something goes horribly wrong. And working in Acrobat Pro is very easy for something to go horribly wrong. So I'm going to save this with a new file name. In pack 2, I will load the uh, remediated file, click start, and now we can see that we get the happy little green check mark that tells us this PDF is technically accessible. Thank you for viewing this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. This is Kenny Moore. Please feel free to contact me using the Contact Kenny page at taggedpdf.com. Accessibility is the right thing to do.